Medicos must be very happy today because 22nd edition of Harrison's Principle of Internal Medicine is finally here. It's hitting shelves, both real and virtual, and it's coming with some huge groundbreaking new chapters on things like focus, that is point of care ultrasound, what the physical examination will look like today, and even how AI is changing medicine. People are calling it as the biggest and most authoritative update in the book's entire history. But with the price tag hovering around $250 and in India is close to $25,000. You're probably asking the same thing that I did. Is it actually worth shelling out for the upgrade or should it just stick with the old edition and other resources? In this video, I'm going to break down exactly who should buy this book and who can absolutely save their money. We are going to look closely at the new content, see how it stacks up against the tools you are probably already using. So don't spend the time until you have seen this. See, as a resident physician, my bag is already stuffed with a brain and my bookshelf has zero room for dead weight. Every single resource I use has to earn its spot by being efficient, accurate and genuinely helpful on the wards and for my studying as well. I am deeply skeptical of new editions because let's be honest, a lot of time the changes are tiny. So I came to this 22nd edition with a very critical eye. I wanted to figure out, is this a real evolution or just a fresh coat of paint? So what's actually new in this two volume monster? Publishers say it's a massive overhaul and I've got to say they are not exaggerating. This isn't just few updated paragraphs, they have changed the entire structure, standardizing the format for every disease chapter which makes finding what you need so much more intuitive than before. Think of it like a UI update for your brain. It's a cleaner, faster and way more clinically relevant. But the real headlines are the brand new chapters. We are talking about dozens of completely new topics that tackle some of the fastest moving areas in medicine. Of course, there is new chapter on COVID-19 and other coronaviruses, which is obviously critical. But there are also incredibly forward-thinking chapters on, let's say, machine learning, on augmented intelligence in clinical medicine, also on network medicine. And this tells me that Harrison is not just trying to document the medicine of today, it's trying to get us ready for the future. And for the first time ever, they've included a dedicated chapter on the physician well-being. Seeing the topic in the textbook of this teacher is a huge statement about shifting challenges and priorities in our field. It's a formal recognition that understanding the system you work in is just as vital as understanding the pathophysiology of any disease. And yes, this edition also makes a big push into the practical skills. It adds new clinical procedure tutorials and comes with completely updated video library. This is a clear attempt to close that gap between what you read in the book and what you do with your hands. A gap that every medical student and junior resident knows all too well. Visually, the book is loaded with more than 3,000 clinical photos, x-rays and diagrams. The algorithm for diagnosis and treatment feel sharper and more useful for making decisions on the fly. Plus, they've added new atlases, visual collections that are genuinely helpful for figuring out what's going on with the patient. Objectively, this is the biggest leap forward for the Harrisons in a long time. The amount of the new stuff is immense. But that brings us back to the most important question that should we do the upgrade, is it really a game changer? Okay, we know now what's new. But does it actually change anything for your day-to-day -day work or study? So let's break down all these important additions. First up, point of care ultrasound or focus. For years, focus was something you had to learn in special courses or fellowship. Putting it in the highest is a landmark moment. That's what I feel. It's a signal that focus is no longer some niche skill. It's a core part of the internal medicine now. The chapter itself is a fantastic introduction. It won't make you like expert overnight, but it gives you the foundational knowledge that why and the when you need before even you touch the probe. Does it replace a dedicated app or hands-on course? No, but it provides the critical context that makes other tools so much more powerful. Next is the chapter called as the value of the physical examination in modern medicine. Now, in an age of high-tech imaging and labs, you might be thinking that this is a step backward, but it's exactly opposite. This chapter is a brilliant and motion-led reframing of how our most of the fundamental skills are. It doesn't just repeat what you learned in Macleoids or maybe Hutchinson. It actually looks the evidence behind physical exam manuals, teaching you how to fit them into modern workflow that includes things like focus. For a medical student wondering if the physical examination even matters anymore, or for us trying to sharpen their diagnostic skills, this chapter is pure gold. And what about the core treatment guidelines? This is another area where 22nd edition reflects of major practice changes. For instance, the cardiology chapters have been upgraded and to reflect evolving role of agile 2 inhibitors and GLP-1 agonists, not just for diabetes but for treating heart failure too. 
The sepsis chapter has also been updated to reflect the latest international consensus definition. Oncology section are updated with new therapeutics. These are not just minor tweaks. They represent fundamental shift in how we manage some of the most critical conditions on the wards. Finally, the group of the chapters on new front tires, behavioral economics, machine learning, neurotherapeutics is what really makes this edition feel different. Past edition felt like perfect summary of the medicine of the last five years. Uh, this also had the chapters, but this one personally feels like a guide to the medicine of the next 10 years. It gives you basic literacy in the ideas and technologies that are already reshaping healthcare. This is where the 22nd edition proves it's not just an update, but a necessary evolution. So if you're finding this breakdown helpful and it's making your decision a little clearer, do me a favor and tap the like button. It's a tiny click for you, but it's a huge signal for me that you want more content like this. Now, what are the alternatives for us? So the new edition is impressive, but how does it stack up against the everything else you could be using already? Because let's face it, none of us have unlimited money or time. Now, why would someone carry a huge textbook when you have a supercomputer in your pocket, right? But it's important to understand that for what reason each platform is. So if you have up to date, that's for latest diagnostic criteria treatment guidelines, like right now. It's the point of care tool for fast answers. But Harrison's is for the why. It gives you deep foundational understanding of pathophysiology that lets you see the principles behind the guidelines. Whereas these platforms up to date, etc. They will tell you that like how you have to utilize the knowledge that is given in the Harrison. So if you are someone who wants to understand it from a core, then Harrison is the right choice. There is no competition. But if you use up to date only for fundamental knowledge uh, or you want to learn algorithm and some basic, then definitely you might consider Harrison. But don't worry, wait till the end because I have a surprise for you at the end. Now, what if you already have the 21st edition? Is it worth uh, again spending at $250 to make the jump? This is tougher call because 21st edition was great. However, the sheer number of the brand new chapters in the 22nd like focus, what we discussed, modern physical examination, physician well-being, and the expanded tech sections, uh, these some new procedures. So this they make like crucial get the book. But I think if you are a resident or student who is deep in your training, this new content is so perfectly aligned with you, like need to know right now that I think the upgrade is justified. But if you have not enough time, or if you are a practicing clinician who refers to the book less often, you could probably either get my Harrison Simplified book or our Adrenaline which has simplified the Harrison into the PDF and the AI chatbots. You can definitely refer that. A final verdict, who should buy it? First, if you are a pre-clinical med student in your first or second year, I would say wait because till the time you go into your finals, again new edition might come. So don't buy now. Harrison is an ocean of information for sure. And but at your stage, in the pre-clinical years, it's just going to be very overwhelming so won't line up well with your coursework and you are so much better off like for books which are more tailored for step one or if you're preparing for need PhD or the next till the time you give the exam. So Harrison is now like you know trying to drink from the fire hose. Next for the clinical made student in your third and fourth year this is definitely consider maybe even buy but the chapter like one of physical examination focus and the updated treatment guidelines are incredibly high for your rotations and shelf exams. The standardized chapter format makes it much easier to quickly get up to speed on the patient's condition before rounds. And it's an investment, but the investment that will pay off through your clinical years and age residency. Now, coming to the residents, especially in the internal medicine or a related field, you definitely need this. This is a, I would say, rather than non-negotiable buy, you should buy it. The cutting edge guidelines, the deep dives into clinical reasoning, the board review questions, and new procedure tutorials are directly relevant to your daily work and board prep. It's the gold standard for a reason, and this is the best version of it yet. And finally, for the practicing clinician, this is a buy. If you are someone who still likes to have a comprehensive textbook as a core part of your library to stay current, then yes, get it. The new chapters are emerging tech and the critical updates in new therapies will keep you uh, on the cutting edge. But if you have gone fully digital and you are happy with that, uh, whatever workflow you are following, all your clinical questions, you can probably pass on this one. You just might not get enough uh, use out of the physical to justify the price. So the conclusion is, should you buy Harrison's 22nd edition despite my kickbaited trial? The answer for most people in clinical training or practice is loud and clear, uh, yes. 
This is not just a minor update, it's a thoughtful, thorough and forward-looking reimagining of the most important textbook in the internal medicine. The editors have clearly listened to what modern students and doctors need, weaving in topics like focus, physician well-being, AI in a way that feels both urgent and essential. Yes, it's expensive, but think of it as an investment in a foundation of a knowledge that will serve you for years. But think of it as an investment in a foundation of a knowledge that will serve you through years. It's a tool basically built not just to get you through training, but to help you become a better doctor in the 21st century. And yes, uh, in the market, there are pirated versions now of the PDFs. I don't really appreciate you sharing those because if somebody has worked hard to make something, we should respect that. Maybe you can buy with three friends together, but give the person that respect. So. If you respect the medicine, medicine will respect you. But nevertheless, I can understand financial condition might not be same for all, but make sure you pay back. And finally, I'm genuinely curious to hear what you think. Drop a comment below. Are you going to upgrade this render second edition in the physical copy or maybe in ebook format? Finally, the most important announcement. If you're preparing for theory or entrance exams, please don't go behind the Harrison. You know, it's difficult to revise that. So, I have my own Harrison Best Simplified book which focuses on what truly matters. It's designed to remove the clutter and present information in a more systematic way. Then, to help you work smarter in medicine, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell too. Thanks for watching. This is Dr. Vishal Gabbadi signing off.